Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with the review of the Jinhao Duo Fold Centennial. Now, I bought all three colour options of this pen that were available at the time. That was just before Christmas 2019. Um, and I, they arrived fairly quickly from China. The pens cost about £6.99 each, including post and packing from China. So I thought this was pretty good value. Um, it is a Parker Duofold Centennial copy, um, and it's fairly unashamed in its, uh, its nomenclature because it's called the Jin Hao Duofold Centennial, so they really aren't, um, aren't holding back with that. Um, I do like the Parker Duofold. Um, it's a very, very nice-looking, classic fountain pen, um, but it is well out of my price bracket. Um, I could afford one, but quite honestly, I don't want to pay several hundred pounds for a fountain pen, vintage fountain pen, which, you know, I, I, I like buying lots of pens and I like using lots of different pens. So one-off purchase is not a so-called grail pen for me. So these fill the gap for me. Uh, they won't be to everyone's taste. So if you're a duo fold fan, watch this video in interest. If you're an absolute duo fold maniac and you're completely appalled by the fact that somebody has copied the Jin Hao, the uh, Parker duo fold, then this probably isn't the video for you. So I do concentrate on the low end fountain pens. So these pens are as they are. Um, the colours don't seem to be named by any of the, any of the sellers. Certainly not on eBay. Um, it was colour A, colour B, colour C. Um, I can't remember which one's which, but this one is like a um, ivory white colour. There is some striation, which is a bit sort of translucent in there. Um, it's a nice ivory white pen. There is a grey striated marbled version, which is quite attractive. And there is this burnt terracotta orange now this is coming up quite bright orange in this uh in this video but it is more of a um burnt terracotta type orange very classic looking uh does look very vintage very retro um and they are nice pens so let's talk about the pen well first off uh, uh we'll pick the orange one So at the top there is the Jin Hao, which way up here, here we go, Jin Hao chariot type logo, seems to be in metal, black plastic finial which is slightly tapered, uh, gold band which connects to the clip and the clip has got the Jin Hao logo on and a ball clip and it is Decent enough, it's a good functional clip. Cap, yep, plain old cap with, well, there is some writing on here which I believe, yep, says Jin Hao on the cap band, nothing on the back. Barrel, yep, classic shapes. Tape is slightly down towards the, uh, the finial here, and there is another gold ring there, black plastic finial. Pen is unscrew, the cap unscrews. One, two, nearly three full turns, which is quite a lot. And in here we have not very much going on. There is some sort of cap liner possibly down there and some metal. The nib, steel, Jin Hao nib, medium nib, um, two-tone, quite nice looking. The section, black plastic section, nothing fancy, it's round, circular, whatever, there's no finger holds or anything. Um, and it is a bit short, as you can see. In the hand, the pen is actually a decent length, so it's a good, good length for my hands for writing, it's very comfortable. It's definitely not a heavy pen, it's all plastic, um, and this section is comfortable to hold. 
There's another gold ring there where the barrel meets the section and there is a bit of a step up in the threads but you don't really notice those at all. Um, it is comfortable in the hand. It does post, not very deeply, but it becomes quite long and yeah, it's, it's just not really for me. Um, it is secure in its posting. comes with a uh, standard international converter and it will take standard international cartridges. And the converter is absolutely fine, no issues with that. Metal, uh, oh, just point out, metal um, metal threads here, plastic barrel. Yeah, lots of stuff going on there, so not suitable for eyedroppering, just in case you were considering that. And that is the pen. So let's compare it to something similar. Now, I know that some of you saw my uh, pen mail video recently, which included these pens. Um... I did do a bit of a comparison with the Moonman M600S, which I have here, and they are incredibly similar. So they're both duo-fold copies, um, and it's up to you. I mean, the Moonman M600S, is they retail online for around £20-ish. Depends on where you buy them from. You can get them cheaper or they can be a fair bit more expensive. Um, I'd say that the quality of these pens is much higher than the Jin Hao pens. Certainly the materials. I mean, this teal um, M600S is absolutely gorgeous material. There's wonderful chatoyancy, glitter. Not too glitzy, though. And it is a very, very nice pen. Really, really like it. Um, Lengthwise, they're very, very similar. The Moonman is slightly longer. And on capped, let's pack these side by side. Try and get a decent enough. Comparison, yeah, the Moon Man is marginally a couple of millimetres longer. Um, and if you happen to want to post these, the Moon Man is try and get these in the frame. Difficult doing this over the camera. There we go. The Moon Man is obviously a little bit longer. Um I'll come back to the Moon Man when we do the writing sample. Twisby Eco T, side by side comparison for length and size and all the rest of it. I haven't been using many Lamy uh, Safari fountain pens recently, uh, which is why I'm not comparing those. But yep, Twisby is a little bit longer, uncapped. Yeah, definitely a little bit longer than the uh, Jin Hao Duo Fold Centennial. So, the most important thing for me with Jin Hao pens is how do they write? Because when I first started on my fountain pen journey back in, oh, uh, 20, I think I'm going back now, 2017 it was. Um, I fell in love with Jin Hao pens. Jin Hao X450 was my favourite pen because it's a great quality pen and I love them. But I did and still do have a few issues with ink starvation. Some of my viewers have helped me out with a few tips and said, ah, oh, yeah, just pull out the feed and the nib and fiddle around with it, move it in and out. You can adjust the flow that way. I've tried it. It's, it, it depends. Certainly it does depend on the quality of paper that you use. If you do a lot of writing on really absorbent, cheap paper, it starves the uh, starves the feed. So that was the uh, X450 and even the 250 and Jin Hao 750. Um, so I was interested to see how these pens perform. And I've been using them at home and at work 
quite extensively to, uh, to gauge whether Jin Hao have sorted out any other problems, and I am actually quite present, quite pleasantly surprised. Um, I'm just going to quickly mention one other thing about the Moon Man materials I forgot to mention. The Moon Man materials are obviously a lot more attractive. Eh, might not be to everyone's taste, but I, I prefer these. Um, do bear in mind you get the arrow shaped clip on the M600S. Uh, but the Jin Hao materials, the Duo Fold, is a little bit. It, it's it's thinner plastic. I'm not saying it's weak, cheap plastic. It is good quality, but it is. It's translucent, um, not quite up to the same standard, but then again you're paying a lot less for these pens. They are less than half the price of the Moonman M600, so just bear that in mind uh, when you come to judge these pens for yourself. So let's do the writing sample. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, we've got a blank page in my road here. Had. So which one shall we start off with? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's go with the ivory. So I'll do a writing sample of all three pens because I do have three different inks in, in these pens which you may be interested in seeing. So. Medium nib, same for all of these pens. Um, there we go. So, what can I say? Well, these are very smooth nibs. Um, I've had no issues with eight, any of the nibs in these pens. They've all been great. They're all straight out of the box, no adjustment, nothing. So, from that point of view, all three have been winners, uh, which is more than I can say for some of the um, other Jin Hao pens that I've bought over the years. You can buy the same models, X450s being my typical one. I have quite a number of those, and the Jin Hao 159s. And sometimes the nibs, you buy three pens. One has a superb nib, one has an okay nib, and one has an absolutely terrible nib. And all three of these are absolutely great. So, um, no pressure bit more pressure. It is possible to squeeze a tiny bit more ink out, but these are stiff steel nibs. There's no flex. Uh, so if that's what you're looking for, this these nibs aren't going to do that. You're going to have to swap the nibs out. Um, they are number uh, six nibs, I believe. And they certainly do keep up. Lay down a lot of ink. No problem whatsoever. This ink in this particular ivory coloured pen is uh, it's the uh, Diamine. Now it's their special uh, special collection, 1864. And this is blue black. Now I find this ink more black than blue um it really really is very dark it's certainly not uh, not something i'd say is a blue black um but yeah absolutely no problem with this pen i can write for ages and ages on really cheap quality paper and the ink just keeps up it keeps writing and writing so no problems whatsoever if you want to see what the other pens are like then 
let's have a look at the grey one. more sound with this because it's there's more of an air gap underneath the paper As you can see, very, very comparable, even with a different colour of ink. Um, this ink, oops, no skips, no hard starts with these pens, by the way. And this is a new ink to me. This is Colorverse, which is one of the inks that my wife bought me for my... Uh, Christmas present, and this is called Colorverse Delicious Sleep, which is rather nice muted purple. Still got plenty of um, plenty of uh, color to it though. So, yep, another winner from that duo fold centennial, and let's move on to the orange one. Did match this ink to the pen. Nice shading with this ink. Quite wet. Absolutely no problems with any of these Jin Hao duo, <coughs> duo Fold Centennials, excuse me. And this is a Diamine, Diamine ink, Diamine Monaco Red. So there you have it, the Jin Hao Duo Fold Centennial. Now, do I think it's better or worse than the Moonman M600S? Well, in all fairness to the Moonman pens, I love them because they just look gorgeous. I love the materials and the colours. Um, the usually these usually come with fine nibs. This one has got a fine Moonman nib, as you can see here, and obviously it is going to be a finer line. I'll just compare it up here. I mean, it's. Still a great writer. No problem with these uh, these pens either. So which do I prefer? Well, in all honesty, I actually like both. They are different pens. They might be based on the Parker Duo Fold Centennial, but they are different themselves. Um, the writing experience for both is absolutely fine. Moonman. Yeah, they're great writers, they keep up with the uh, ink flow and everything else. But so do the, I mean, the Gin House, way better than the old Gin House of a few years ago. And certainly these Duo Fold Centennial Gin House are much, much better pens than the Gin X450. Um, obviously it's a plastic pen, it's not the all metal pen like the X450, so there's still a decent weight to these pens but they're not heavy at all, um, and they don't have the weight of the X450. It's not that type of pen. Um, does the Gin Hao Duo Fold Centennial get a thumbs up from me? Absolutely, yes, it does. These are really, really good pens. So if you really do want a Gin Hao, um, sorry, a Duo Fold copy, these, I think, fit the bill, because they do have this what I would say more classic design and colour scheme 
Uh, they are more vintage looking than the uh, Moonman M600S. But the M600S is a gorgeous pen in itself, and quite honestly, you pays your money, you takes your choice. I love the M600S, but certainly the Duo Fold Centennial from Jin Hao is another winner. It's a great pen. So I'm really happy with these pens. I'm interested to see if Jin Hao produce any more colour variations of these, because these were the only three colours available at the time of purchase. Um, I'm hoping that Jin Hao will produce more colours of the uh, Duo Fold Centennial, because they're really, really nice. The good quality pens, extremely affordable, £6.99 for this quality. Um, really, really good. I mean, these are certainly comparable to the Lamy uh, Safari, which is, you know, twice the price. Um, I hope that Jin Hao keep up with the um, production quality control or repeatability uh, of these pens because, as far as I'm concerned, heading <laughs> heading into 2020, back in December when I bought these pens, um, if this is what we can expect from Jin Hao in the future, then, yeah, they are really trying to compete with Moon Man, certainly. Um, and possibly some of the other Chinese manufacturers. I think they might be upping their game uh, and increasing uh, their quality control or ability to produce decent quality pens or nibs repeatably. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what 2020 brings for Jin Hao because I think they have been, in my view, lagging behind. Um, the X450, 159, they're still good sellers, they're still easily available in all the different colours. Um, so this, for me, is a bit of a comeback from G for Jin Hao, because I've largely ignored many of the mainstream Jin Hao's, and they haven't done anything radical. This is a new model for them. So kudos to uh, Jin Hao for actually making... One, a classic looking pen that actually writes well. Two, and number three, actually making it affordable. They aren't charging Moon Man or Pen BBS prices. So I'm very happy with the Jinho Duo Fold Centennial. And if you're in the market for one of these pens, I certainly recommend you go for it because I don't think, in my opinion, you're going to be disappointed. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.